All right, so we are recording now and welcome to Veterinary Practice Profits. This is our interview with Steve and Dean and I'm so excited to have you guys. Real quick, let me repeat it one more time um, that we are recording this session. So if you are joining us as attendee, we do have all the attendees in mute so we can get a clean recording. We're gonna be very respectful of the time and get you guys out here right on time. It's gonna be a half an hour webinar. And if you do have questions, put a, uh, the questions in the question box and we'll address them at the end. Um, one more time to repeat, we do have next month's webinar is on wellness and it is two days, September 10th to register, keep an eye on social media. And also, um, we will be having that, uh, registration form on our website, which is the vetsbestfriend.com. All right. So today, uh, our program is veterinary practice profits with Dean Biggs and Steve Mon. And, uh, you guys, if you're looking to get more customers in your practice, you are definitely in the right place. Um, if you want to, or if you need to leave early, this uh, website will be on our website. It'll be recorded and live for you to check out there afterwards. And if you want to share it with anybody else in your office or practice as well. Um, so thank you very, very much for, for joining us. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day because I know you have a lot to do. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background, I'm Awesome. why we do the webinars. My name again is Jared Spar, and I'm the founder of The Vet's Best Friend. We're a group of consultants that work specifically with veterinarians, and we have some unique products. We have affiliate marketing, wellness, and so on that we brought to veterinarians based on their needs because we do a lot of surveys and go to a lot of trade shows. <clears throat> and I specifically am a cash flow consultant, so I help customers create reliable and predictable cash flow for their business. Uh, last year, we did a study at the Michigan Veterinary Association trade show, and I was amazed at pretty much the number one concern that veterinarians had was trying to get more uh, customers in their door. Sorry, I'm getting distracted as we have a question coming in already. <laughs> Please turn up your microphone. Yeah, you are a little quiet. Is that better? Can you hear me okay, Dean? Yep, yep. All right, so I'm going to introduce Dean real quick. Um, and I, I have to say, I'm really excited to talk to you. We, I have both Dean and Steve. We're going to be on with us. Steve couldn't make it. He had a, a conflict that he had to take care of. So we do have Dean with us. And he is a marketing guru who specializes in the veterinary industry. Uh, they are both very high value consultants and they get great results for their clients. So I'm excited to have them sharing some of their secrets with our audience. Uh, quick introduction for Steve. Uh, Steve has nearly 20 years experience in the animal health excuse me the animal health business and in fact has worked with the top four out of five animal health companies in the world for over 30 years uh, steve has an honors graduate degree from cambridge university and now lives in or near orlando florida with his wife and two daughters and on the line with us is dean biggs dean is a marketing strategist works specifically with veterinarians and has for over 15 years he's a small business owner uh, dean is also an expert in internet marketing with a degree in computing and has helped veterinary practice owners across America get more clients in their doors. Originally, Dean is from the UK and now resides in Lake Mary, Florida, which I'm guessing is that near Orlando, Dean? Yes, we're just about um, half an hour north of Orlando, about 40 minutes north of Disney and all that good stuff down there. <laughs> so you always have something to do. So yeah. I thank you very, very much to uh, for joining us. Uh, you guys are the co-authors of the book, Secrets to Growing Your Veterinary Practice in the New Economy, which has received several five-star reviews out of Amazon.com. And I have your preferred contact information up on the screen. So if you guys want to get a hold of these two directly, please go to their website. It's on the screen right now. It's vetpracticeprofits.com. Yeah, and you actually when they're on there, if you, the, the book on, on Amazon, I think it retails for about $47 on Amazon, but if you go to that website there, you can get it for about $17 on there. That's one seven seventeen dollars on on our website. So you can save yourself a little bit of money if you want to, if you're interested in having a look at the book. Perfect. That's a huge difference. All right. So like I said before, we uh, interview veterinarians to find out what their biggest struggle is. And it's ranged in everything from cash flow to dealing with employees. And like I said, the, the biggest one was getting more customers in their front door. So if you have customers that are not coming back for their wellness exam or customers who just kind of put it off and put it off because they say they can't afford it, uh, this is the right webinar for you and you are definitely in the right place because we're going to get you some inside secrets to get customers in your door. So Dean, first question I have in your book you talked about the new economy. What exactly do you mean? 
Well, in, in the book, what we when we originally wrote the book, um, and we, we obviously we called the book "Cities to Grow in Your Betting Practice in the New Economy." And what we meant back then was we wrote the book when it was sort of in the middle of the, the start of the recession, and uh, what we found was that people were being much more judicious with their money, so they were they were very much more judicious with how they spent them, with their dollars. Um, it, it meant that. Gone were the days where you could just hang out your veterinary shingle and a flock of people would come uh, to visit your practice. Uh, you know, the, now the, the time has come where if you want a veterinary practice, you have to have a very profound reason for opening that practice. And you know, and if you want to expect people to come and pet them as they come, then you've got to have something very special and offer for them to get there. They're not just going to flock in. But what it's transitioned to really from since we wrote the book is that what we found the trend over the last couple of years is that. In an Alpine opinion, the veterinary profession, as as probably many of the listeners know it now, is is in decline, and there's a few reasons for that which have all sort of come together at the same time. Time. So the first thing you've got is that there's, you no know, despite what you might let to believe, there is no shortage of veterinarians. So and, and especially not in um, companion animal medicine. And what we found was that between um, for a couple of reasons, one. There are more veterinary colleges opening up, even though there's not a shortage of veterinarians. There's still more veterinary colleges opening up, and uh, I know there was plans for new vet schools in New York State, Utah, and Arizona. Uh, and then, as well as new veterinary schools opening up, the number of uh, DVMs that are graduating out of these veterinary schools is increasing. In it was a 50% increase in the number of veterinary graduates in 2012. And then you've got the other end of the life, so you've got more vets coming in at one end, and then at the other end of the life cycle, you've got the fact that, that fewer vets are retiring, and that's down to a, a couple of reasons. You know, one, because you know pension funds are taking a financial battering, so the many veterinarians are having to work uh, longer in life than they would have liked to. But then the other thing is, you know, if you if you look at it, the, the thing is that being um, 60 in, or in your 60s today is a lot different to what being in your 60s was. 20 years ago, so for many veterinarians, you know, we still still speak to veterinarians in the 60s and, and they're getting into the 70s where they still want to practice just because they love practicing and they, and they don't want to just go home and sit and do nothing. So you've got fewer veterinarians retiring at the other end. And in fact, between uh, 2011, uh, by the, there were 12, or by the end of 2000, I'm sorry, there were 12,000 more practicing vets than there were just five years previously in 2006. So you've got this influx of veterinarians, which obviously creates much more competition in the marketplace. But then during the same period, what you find is that the actual number of pet owners is declining. So in exactly the same period, so in that period between 2006 and 2011, when 12,000 more vets entered the marketplace, the ABMA reported that the number of uh, dogs owned by Americans decreased by 2 million and the number of cats by 7.6 million uh, in that same Period, so that it was the first major decline in dog and cat households since 1991. So, you know, there's this. In fact, we allude, we actually predict this in, in the book, but there are, you know, there's too many veterinary, veterinary practice around and not enough pet owners to, to go around them. So that's one problem. Then you've got the, the issue that, as well as being lots of competition within the industry, we've now got lots of competition from outside the industry. So you've got, you know, traditional mainstays of any veterinary practice where veterinary practices could make a lot of money on, such as flea tick and even heartworm preventatives are now being snatched out of the hands of veterinarians because you've got big supermarket chains such as Walmart and Target who are most on the way in, you've got wholesalers such as Costco and Sam's Club who are doing the same, and then of course you've got all the internet pharmacies who are all scrapping for your client's business. And then we've now got the situation where the vaccines are being taken away too, so we've seen pharmacy chains such as Walgreens, uh, even small um, pet shops who are advertising shot, traveling shot doctors, if you like, who would come once a month, come to Walgreens, uh, bring their pet, and um, you know, get your shot. In fact, I've, I've just took a photograph on my cell phone, or perhaps I'll, I'll, um, I'll send it to you, Jordan, you can email it out to everybody. I took a, a, a photograph the other day, I went past the 7 Eleven uh, gas station, and there was a sign outside saying um, Pet Shot Clinic, <laughs> where they were advertising for one or two days during the month. You could bring your pet to the gas station and get all the all the vaccines that your pet needed. So, you know what's happening is you've got all this increased uh, competition uh, in in the industry. Now, in 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 many ways, the the vaccine thing is is being you know brought on the veterinarians by themselves in some res in some respect because after years of being taught to 
um, to discount the, the the wellness exam and then mark up the vaccines, what the message has gone out to the, the peddling public is that the vaccines is the most important thing, and that's the thing that you should be. That's the thing that the number one thing you need for your pet. And the, the, the opposite message has gone out for the wellness exam. So the message has gone out that the vaccine is the main thing, and the, you know, the, the wellness exam isn't important. So when you reduce it down to that level, the vaccine then becomes a commodity, which now you can just like any other commodity, like your gasoline or your, your milk, you can go to your gas station and get. So the new economy is, you know, it's definitely changed and a lot due to, just due to the fact that there was just too many businesses of each sort, you know, too many, you don't need, there's no reason to have a Starbucks on each corner, um, you know, that sort of thing is what we were writing about in the book, but then over you know, the last couple of years, what we sort of uh, found is that the, just the competition from inside and outside the veterinary industry has just increased so dramatically that it's a, you know, it's a completely new economy from what probably it was when most veterinarians started the practices. So basically for a veterinarian, you've got more vets with less pets. So it's higher competition. You've got competition for new vendors that are low cost, like 7-Eleven, which blows yeah. my mind. And then I think the biggest thing that kind of I, I picked up on was the theme of if you build it, they will come no longer works. You actually have to do yeah. something unique for your business. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So the, so just like every other business, I mean, it's the same with, uh, and it's not just veterinarians, this is all businesses are, that the new economy is affecting because it's, it's the same reason why, uh, you know, if if the only reason that your, that your vet and your practice is getting customers is because you're either the nearest practice to town or because you're the cheapest practice, then it's a worrying situation. And if you think when you're driving down the the um, the main street of your town, what what makes you decide whether to um, drive into the chilies on one side of the road or the Applebee's on the other side of the road? And in most cases, just because of they're on the right side of the road to turn into, you know, there's no compelling reason to choose either one or the other. Which is why you're seeing a lot of these sort of places are, are declining because they, they haven't got enough about them to um, make them a place where you actually choose to go other than because of price and location. And the same thing's happening with, with a lot of veterinary practices as well. We, we find um, you know, some of our clients are in areas where they have uh, 35 other competing veterinary practices within a 10 mile radius. Well, you, you know, there's something got to give when the number of pet owners is going down. You just can't, a lot of markets just can't sustain that many uh, veterinary practices in that, in that smaller space. Gotcha. So that kind of leads into the next question is what can a, a veterinarian practice do to grow? Well, in the in the book, I mean, obviously the book was all about you know secrets to growing your, your practice. And although the, you know the book's two hundred sixty two pages, packed with secrets, so we can only scratch the surface of, re, of the things, some of the things you can do. But one of the things we teach in the book is something called the three pillars of veterinary practice growth. So when we when we tell you what they are, they, they may seem very simple and straightforward, and that everybody should want to be doing them. But few vets do do them on a consistent basis. So the three pillars of veterinary practice growth are Client, client attraction, obviously, so you should be doing things in your practice every day to attract new clients. And there's, there's some things we can talk about that in terms of doing that. Client retention, which a lot of veterinary practices don't put much emphasis into. So if you think about the number of, just on the number of pets that get euthanized every month in your practice, then you need to be doing, uh, you, you know, we need to be doing client attraction just to backfill those. But then client retention, there are other clients in your practice who leave your practice or who don't, don't come back after not being there for a year since their last visit, there's people who don't come back to your practice for other reasons other than the fact that they moved out of the area or other than the fact that their, their pet is deceased. So you have to do things in your practice every day to fill that void. We have a, something we talk about in the um, book called The Fatal Assumption, and that is that the fatal assumption is that just because Mrs. Smith brought Fluffy in for an appointment yesterday, that she will come in back with Fluffy in 12 months time because within that 12 months, there's a lot, a lot of things can happen. So, for example, other veterinarians can move into the area, uh, so they've got more choice. Other existing veterinarians can introduce new, new equipment that they, that they advertise. They've got some new fancy laser machine. They bring some new uh, doctor in that's got a, a, a good reputation. And there's lots of different things can happen in between. Well, after Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Smith runs out the door with Fluffy, after you've done that, that appointment, there's a lot of things can happen before you see her again in 12 months. So what most family practices do is they'll wait until a couple of weeks before or a few, you know, a few weeks before, and then they'll start sending reminders out. Well, you know, you've, there's, could be a 10-month gap when you've had no communication whatsoever. So 
you need to have things in place to make sure that you retain your, your clients um, so that you're communicating with them throughout the year to keep them involved. The third thing is client revenue. So you've got to do things to increase the revenue from your existing clients. So that means boils down to two things. What that one that means you have to do things to ethically get the, those clients to come back in more often, so to sell them more wellness type things. So for example, you have to get them in for their uh, dental exams, for example, to, to do preventative uh, dental work. Uh, you have to get them in for things like if for do by doing promotions such as um, IV chips and things. So you've got to be doing things to ethically get the client. We'll always have the emphasis on the word ethical. Ethically, you've got to be doing things that will make your clients want to come back in at other times during the year, um, other than their annual appointment. And of course, just because when they came in for the annual appointment and you offered them a pet ID chip or you offered them a heartworm uh, medication or you offered to clean their dog's teeth and they didn't take it up, doesn't say that they won't come back at other times during the year when perhaps they haven't had to pull out the big. Um, bill that they were given when they, when they came in for the dog's annual exam. And then the other part of client revenue is once you've got clients in your practice, whether they've come in for the annual exam or whether they've come in because you've attracted them with some other offer, once they're in there then you have to ethically make, make them uh, get the most out of them. So you have to ethically get them to spend more while they're in the practice. So you have to do things within your practice so that when they come in they also buy other things in your practice other than just the services that they come in. Now this can boil down to something as simple as just some simple signage on your um, the facings of your products so that instead of a, a, a client coming in and just sitting down in the waiting area and reading a, a you know a magazine that's been there for two or three weeks or you know just sitting looking around that they actually get up off the back sides and, and go to your where your pet products are and they have a look at them and they get engaged with them and they, and they, and they buy them it, it can boil down to having simple scripts for your staff so that when they come out of the, the room and they've, had, they've seen the, the veterinarian about something that the, 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 the staff have scripts to upsell them and cross sell them and other different things. Again, ethically, you're not, you're not trying to, 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 to um, con people here or buy, get them to buy things that they don't need, but if, you know, hand on heart, if you've got things in your practice that are on the shelf that they don't need, then you shouldn't be selling them. So, you know, in, in most cases, what will happen is, you know, Vets get um, sometimes get a little concerned about having to sell other things in their practice. But if you don't sell them, they're just going to walk out of the practice and, and walk down the street and walk into Petco or PetSmart and buy other things that, that they could have bought from you that they would have been better advised buying from you but that they're going to buy elsewhere. So you've got the the um, the three pillars of veterinary practice growth. Underneath those three pillars, what we always we say the foundations of that are systems, so marketing systems. So what you want is you want to have all of these different, you want to have systems in place for getting new clients. So all the different marketing activities that you do to get new clients, you need, you need to be systematically done. You need systems in place for client retention. You need systems in place for increasing client, client revenue. And then the other big thing, the big thing of the book really is that you need in this economy more than any other time, you need to be different. So you need to be doing things in your practice that are going to differentiate you from every other practice out there. And in fact, we have a, a we have something called the ultimate question that's in the book. And the ultimate question is, and we suggest you put this on the wall and in every every sort of area where your customer where your clients won't see, so all the back end parts where, where your staff will see every day. We suggest you put these signs up. And what the sign says is, why should a pet owner do um, you choose my practice? So why should a pet owner choose my practice as opposed to every other option out there, including doing nothing at all? So you've got to continually every day look at that and think, well, why should why ask the question, why should a pet owner choose me? Why should they choose our practice as opposed to the practice down the street or the practice on the other side of town or as opposed to sitting at home and doing nothing and not bringing their dog to a veterinarian? So you've got to answer that question continually. To do that, you've got to be different. You've got to find ways in your practice to be different uh, from your competitors so that one, people will choose you because you are different, but two, then you can charge more than them because you've got nothing to compare against because of the differences. So I think there's a lot of information there. <laughs> and I think you've got us a little bit of a teaser, so we got some good information to start with. But for clients or, or, or pet owner or practice owners who are inspired to learn more, getting your book will go into a lot more detail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot more in the, in the book, obviously. I mean, it's a quick, it's, it's, a, it's 262 pages, but it's a, it's a fairly quick read. You can, you can read it in, you know, a couple of nights. It's not, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's very, uh, a very easy read. Also, we've been told by veterinarians I read it anyway. <laughs>
and take, probably take a lot of notes along the way. All right, so you talked about being different and being unique. And I know from talking to you before, on, you've got a, a really cool system of showing vets how to do that. Tell me a little bit how a veterinarian can be different. Okay, well, there's, there's lots of different ways that you, obviously in the first instance, there's lots of different ways that you can be different. So you can, you can be different by who you market to. So in other words, I know you, talk, you guys talk a lot about um, your target market. So choosing your target market is one, so you, and, and who you market your service to. So you never want to market to the, uh, the cheapest people. You want, to, you, know, you want to market to people who are affluent is, is one of the first things. But one of the big things that we've sort of we stumbled on a couple of years ago really was, um, and we don't understand why vet, more vets do it, is breed specific marketing. So here's, here's one example of an area that you can become different. So what we found when we were working with some of the clients that we do, uh, vet, we, we do for some of our clients we do client newsletters for their clients. And one of the things we were doing as part of that is we were actually um, making the newsletters very personal to the client using variable data printing, so we were putting the client's name on the front, the client, the names of the pets on the front, and we started putting the the, name, the, the picture of the actual client's breed on the front. So if they had a Shih Tzu, they'd get a newsletter with a Shih Tzu on the front. If they had a Dachshund, they'd get a newsletter with a Dachshund on the front. And because of that, we were getting the data off our veterinarians in terms of how many um, patient, how many clients they had and how many patients they had and what the different types of breeds were. And what we found was, we started analyzing the data, and what we found was that if you look at for any vet veterinarian, and you, if you take mixed breed out of it, because obviously mixed breed is going to be the if you took mixed breed as a breed, that's going to be the biggest uh, breed. But if you took them aside and, as, as not being a breed, and you just look at the the you know, purebred dogs, your Labradors, your Dachshunds, your Chihuahuas, etc., then what we found was that um, if you took the top three breeds, then that would represent a 12, around about twenty two percent of all the dogs in your practice. So we, most veterinarians might have, you know, 230 different breeds of dog at the scene. And but if you took just the top um, two, the top three percent, that would account for 22 percent. If you then went down to the top 10 percent of dogs, then that would account for about 50 percent of the dogs in your practice. So and if your practice is typical of all of the of the practices in your area, then really what we're saying is that. You know, the top 10 breeds that you see in your practice is, is represents 50% of the dogs in your area. And if you go all the way down to 25, what you find is that the top 25 dogs represented in your practice account for about 75% of the dogs in your practice. And then the, the remaining 200 or so are in that 25%. So you get the, then you get in the ones and twosies of each different breed. So on with that information, and, and it's obviously it's information that everybody on this call can get very easily out of the practice management system. You can go now and you can find out what the, uh, the list of breeds is in, in your practice and what the top breeds are. What you can then do is you can then do a couple of things. One is you can come up with a breed-specific marketing program. And I know um, next week you're going to speak about uh, wellness uh, plans, and this sort of really ties, ties in with that. So you can now have a breed-specific marketing program. So, so and the way we always explain this is if you could imagine you lived in a big metropolitan area, and I, and I guess some of the people on this call might live in a big metropolitan area, what would happen if some entrepreneurial veterinarian decided they were going to open up the Labrador Wellness Center? Now, bearing in mind that in most of the veterinary practices that we speak to, Labrador is usually the number one breed, uh, although we did speak to one in California the other day where it was Chihuahua was the number one breed, but most practices it's Labrador Retriever. And for most practices, Labrador Retriever accounts for about 10 or 12% of the dogs in their practice. So if some entrepreneurial veterinarian in a big metropolitan area decided to open up the Labrador Wellness Center and their, their whole sales pitch was we only market, we only uh, have to take Labradors in, so you've got to be a Labrador owner to visit us, and that's all we bought, that's all we groom, and that's all we do daycare for. All the products we have in the, in the practice are geared towards a Labrador, we have a Labrador food in here, we, you know, everything, we've seen every condition that a Labrador has because that's all we deal with every day is Labradors. If you are a Labrador owner, then, then it's a very, very compelling proposition to take your dog to the Labrador Wellness Center because you know, they are, the, just by definition, they are the experts in Labradors. So if, and if you were a practice that, that were based in that area and somebody did that, you bear in mind that 10 to 12% of the dogs in your practice could be Labradors, you'd be, you know, you'd be quite scared of the fact that you know, they could, Conceivably, you could lose a lot of them to this Labrador Wellness Center. 
So what you've got to think of is, well, how could we counteract that and how, or how could we be the ones that did do that ourselves without actually going and open up a separate practice for each um, different breed? And the, the way you would do that is by having breed-specific wellness plans within your practice. So you have, if you can just start by taking your top three breeds, you might have a Labrador wellness program, you might have a Chihuahua wellness program, you might have a Dachshund wellness program, for example. So now what happens is, you one, you can market that to the, the existing clients in your practice because you can easily pull out a list of all the Labrador owners and you can market to them and say we've got this new uh, wellness plan and as part of that plan what we're going to do is we're going to give you everything that you would have got normally but then we're going to give you some extra screenings for some of the previous positions that Labradors have which might include extra blood work, might include some x-rays, might include some other things down the line. We're going to send you a, a Labrador calendar every year for, because you're a Labrador owner when you join, we're going to give you a Labrador Mom T-shirt. Bear in mind, most, most of your clients are, are, are the female of the house. We're going to send you a Labrador Mom T-shirt, and you're going to create this this um, lab, whole Labrador experience. We're going to have Labrador events. So, you know, once every quarter, we're going to have a Labrador walk in the park where all the Labrador owners come and take the dogs for a walk. We're going to have Labrador social evenings, and you create this this special thing that now can't be compared to anybody else because nobody else, in, none of the other veterinarians in your area, are offering this Labrador program. The, the Labrador owners don't care the fact that you've also got a Chihuahua program, they don't care that you've also got a Dachshund program because all your marketing to them is the Labrador program and that's all they're interested in. You, obviously you can do the same with Chihuahuas, you can do the same with the Dachshunds. What's going to happen is pretty soon the message is going to get out because you're going to be advertising this on your website, you can, you can advertise this in different areas. The message that's going to go out of you, the other the other Labrador owners in the area, for example, if it was Labrador's in the first instance, is that the place to go to take your Labrador is XYZ Veterinary Clinic or whatever your veterinary clinic's called because they're the ones with the Labrador Wellness Center. So they're the ones with the Labrador Wellness Center at XYZ Veterinary Clinic. They're the ones that, they, that they're going to take the dog to because just as with if somebody opened up a, just a separate building on its own right as a Labrador Wellness Center, you've now got a very compelling proposition that one you can charge more for because the, the clever way to do it is to build in is a wellness plan that's paid monthly. But then what you do is obviously you you will um, the total cost will be uh, probably less than if they had to buy the services altogether. So you're slightly discounting the services for, for adding all these different extras in. But it will be more than the price than if they just came for a normal wellness exam. But then you're splitting the cost up across the um, on a monthly basis because. As Jared will tell you, you know, the, you know, people like to pay monthly. One of the reasons they like to pay monthly is like when you, you know, the same reason why car advertisers don't advertise a car being twenty five thousand dollars. They advertise a car being two hundred ninety nine dollars a month because people can see the two hundred ninety nine dollars a month, but they can't see the twenty five thousand dollars. And by the way, if you, where we've seen this work particularly well, whether you do a wellness plan or not, is on your hardware medication. You'll see that clients. Uh, whereas they will balk at paying $120 for a year supply of hardware, whatever your hardware medication is, they'll quite happily pay $15 a month for the hardware and, and pay it on a monthly basis, even though they're, they're actually going to pay $180 across the year. They'll quite happily do that because, again, they can see the $15 a month, but they can't see the $180 in one go. So breed-specific uh, wellness plans are an awesome way to, um, to differentiate yourself from every other practice in the area. Another quick way to do it, going back to the vaccine example, and we've seen we've seen this quite a lot now. Um, and in fact, in our our monthly newsletter that we, we do, we actually um, interviewed a veterinarian in Indianapolis that's, that's doing this, is the free vaccines for life program. So one of the things you can do to put the emphasis back on the wellness program, but all I'm sorry on the on the wellness exam, but also to differentiate yourself from the other practices and and also to um, you know, counteract some of the uh, you know the the Walgreens and the, the garages is to you know charge full price for your wellness uh, exam and have a, the, the the way the free vaccines for life program works is that the message is well you pay an initial fee to start with which usually the fee co probably covers your two years of your of having to buy the, the vaccines they join that fee to get in the program and then you give them free vaccines for life. Uh, for every year, every year, but on the condition that they, to get the qualified, they must bring their dog in for the wellness exam and pay full price for the wellness exam. And of course, when they bring the dog in for the wellness exam, you're going to examine the teeth and find problems there that might need other dental work. You're going to find other issues as, as you do normally with other wellness exams. So you're not actually going to lose out 
uh, any money on it, but what you are doing is you you create another thing that makes your practice unique, uh, and uh, you know giving re giving vet on uh, pet owners a compelling reason to come in because you're doing this uh, free program. So the two one of the two biggest things you can do things that you know you've got to think about things that nobody else is doing, and there's there's, there's tons of different uh, things that you, you can talk about. In fact, in our we had a toolkit online which goes into this in a lot more detail and just in your practice. But you know, breed specific is a, is a good one to differentiate yourselves. Free vaccines for life is, is another good one for differentiating yourselves to make give the pet owners in your area compelling reasons to choose you as opposed to choosing, as opposed to choosing any other veterinary practice in your area. Perfect. And we're kind of running short on time, so I'm going to skip this slide and go straight to. Uh, well, before we get to questions, real quick, I, you had talked about some things that you offer, like the newsletter. Really quickly, uh, tell me about what you can do or your special offer to our clients. Okay, well, we have we have something called the uh, the Veterinary Insiders Club, which is it's a newsletter that and, a, and an audio CD that we have every month. We've been doing this for about three years now. In fact, the, the, the book actually came initially from some of the contents of the early newsletters. We, that was the sort of starting point here, the emphasis on doing the book, the emphasis for doing the book. So we have the Veterinary Insiders Club. What you get is every month you get a, a newsletter, which we try to put at least two different um, veterinary growth strategies in there. And then there's also an audio CD, which is basically the audio version of the newsletter. So if you haven't got time, and we've been in veterinary offices before, where you know there'll be a pile of uh, veterinary practice news magazines piled up still in the cellophane wrapper, and, and this where they haven't you know, they haven't got around to them because they're so busy, you can listen. You can just put the CD in the car and listen it on the way into work in the audio version. Now, traditionally, what we've done is we've sold that for ninety-seven dollars a month, but we've got a, a special, very special offer for um, people who are on this webinar. Where we're doing it for just um, forty-seven dollars, I think is the price we're, we're doing it for. Uh, forty-seven dollars a month, and you can get that by just going to veterinaryinsidersclub.com/vbf for Vet's best friend. Um, if you go there, you can you can have a look, and it's it's the, the there's no contract with it. You can try it, and if you you know if you if it's not for you, just tell us, and we'll we cancel it straight away. That's that's not a, never been an issue uh, with us. So it's something that you can. Um, you can try, and if you think it's a good resource, then you'll keep using it. If you don't think it's a good resource, then you won't. We we also have a ten times your money back guarantee on there. So uh, if you don't, if in any month you don't think that it's it's worth ten times the value of what you paid for it. You know, so if you haven't, if, you know, by applying, if you didn't think that if you applied the strategies in the newsletter that we teach you, if you didn't think that you would um, get your money back, then you can. Uh, you know, you can just let us know, and we'll give you, you will give you money back, no questions asked for that for that month. That's, that's no problem. And we also have another resource. I mean, we, we suggest people get into that. I mean, the, the first instance, go to our website. By the, if, if you want to just dip your toe in the water of what we do, go to the website, just the, the you know, the vetpracticeproducts.com, and just buy the book for seventeen dollars. Like I say, it's a quick, it's a quick read, and it'll give you a lot of strategies to use in your practice. In fact, we've got, we've had practices where they've just given the book to their to one of the people in their office and just got them to work through the book in terms of getting new business. If you want ongoing strategies every month and you want them at the, at the special offer price, uh, it's just open for the for 24 hours, this is the special price. So go to veterinaryinsiders.com slash VBF and you can get that there. Uh, and then we've got, you know, do that first and then we've, we've got lots of other stuff you can get, you know, we've got a whole toolkit online where it's, um, you know, 22 modules of coaching videos and how-to videos on doing every different aspect of veterinary marketing. But what we suggest is, you know, dip your, dip your toe in the water first, get to know us, get, get, build a relationship with us, find out what we're all about, um, you know, get some of the, 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 less, ex the, 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 the less expensive stuff first and, and find out, you know, if it's, if it's going to work for you. And then if it is, and for most practices it, it, it does, then you can, then, you know, Try some of our other stuff, but um, we've got that special offer on there, on there, just for people for the best best friend. Like I said, it's a it's a twenty four hour offer from when you, you get on this on the site. So uh, just go to veterinaryinsidersclub.com slash vbf. All right, we just got a comment from Ed that he can't see the slides, so uh, I'm going to announce it really quick that for the uh, newsletter and for the um, half off deal that uh, Dean's offering you guys, go to www.veterinaryinsidersclub.com forward slash VBF. And that'll get you that uh, information for half off. Uh, if you want to just go there to check it out, you can do that. Just remember, it's only available for 24 hours. And then also to get uh, the book, what was the website again for the book, Dean? 
The book, you can just go to our main website, which is vetpracticeprofits.com. Perfect. You know, which is and the one you've put at the, at the start. Um, so that's just vet, vetpracticeprofits.com. Uh, what you'll where you'll find you'll find some there's some other free resources on there. We've got some free I think some free videos in there and stuff. And there's um, you can get the book. And there's a the, you know, we we got, we got the other webinars. We, we have a webinar called um, more yet more secrets to grow in your your practice where you can find other stuff. Um, some of which we've touched on in this webinar, but there's some other stuff on there that you won't have, you won't have heard of. So you can uh, you can go on there and, and look at that if it's something that you want. To do. All right and. We are running a little bit over. Um, Adam had a question, and his question was, what is the best way to use technology to increase practice profits? Uh, can you well, really quickly address that? Yeah, one of the, one of the, I've got a resource for you, actually. If you go to um, one of the best te technology resources that we've found um, for specifically for increasing your VET profits is to go to a company called VETGATE Global. So you go to vetgateglobal.com. It's a guy called Dr. Jay Brown. Um, he's got a system that where it, it basically uses, uh, it, it integrates with your, e with your email subscribers. It automatically sends emails out for reminders. He can actually give you, if you get, get in touch with them, he can actually give you proof. He can show you charts of practices that work. Anonymized, obviously, he can show you charts of practices that work with where they've, Turned around your uh, your flea business, your heartworm business, your dentals, where they've got uh, they've increased practice revenues by having uh, this communication system built in, where it automatically communicates with your clients and gets them to ethically come back in. So that vet is a resource. VetgateGlobal.com would be one that we would like to go to. Very cool. I'm taking notes too because <laughs> that's the first time I've heard of that one. So per yeah, perfect. I, I appreciate that one. Uh, if you guys do have more questions, just in the interest of time, email me afterwards and we will get you uh, the answers to any questions you do have. Um, so I, you know, just trying to get you guys out of here real quick and on time because I do respect your time. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking your time out of your day to come and check us out. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, The Vet's Best Friend, please do. Please go to our website. It's thevetsbestfriend.com and check us out. We have wellness programs. We have uh, affiliate marketing programs or all turnkey where we can show you how to increase your income and uh, reduce your expenses. And remember that next month's program is going to be on wellness. You can register at our website. That's thevetsbestfriend.com. It should be up in about a week for the registration there. And then again, Dean, thanks very much for uh, sticking the time with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been good. All right, so everyone, until next time, have a profitable day. All right, Dean, we're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs>